Heavenly Father, the exact same way. And irrespective of what type of situation you're going through, God wants to help you through it. Yes. We are fighting the biggest battle of our life right now with my beautiful wife, Chris. Um, a little over 14 months ago, she had a severe stroke, a brain bleed that destroyed 70% of one side of her brain. And uh, I talked to the doctor that next morning in Oklahoma City Medical Center, Oklahoma City, which is a fantastic state-of-the-art hospital. And the guy told me she will probably never leave this hospital alive. That was the next morning. And he said that if she does, she'll simply live in a nursing home in a bed the rest of her life and be taken care of 24 hours a day. Never go back to the ranch. They were talking to him. I got a little upset with that doctor at the time. I don't know. Call me there. Get me for hit deep properly. But uh, my first thought, I looked down on his name tag and it did not say God. Right. That's right. Uh, say God. And she walked out of it. She didn't walk out of the hospital. We were over her out. But she left that hospital alive. That's 14 months ago. And then God sends me this note through wicked social media yeah. of a lady that was told in 1981. That's the kind of God I serve. That's the kind of God you serve. That's the kind of God that if you're not saved, if you're not born again, if you don't trust God with everything you have, you don't make him Lord of your life. Maybe that's why I brought you here this morning. So you can have a God like that in your life. Not for fishing deals, not for somebody who's going to walk again, not for somebody who's got a year left at 81, 1981 or whatever she said it was. You need that God for eternity. You need that God like I did at 12 years old. Just as much as I need that God right now. Because without him, you're going to hell. She said that. That's the promise that's written in the Bible. That's the reason Jesus died on the cross, to keep you from going to hell. All of the other stuff, the mountains of blessings, one of those blessings is that beautiful girl right there. She was married 50 some odd years. Beautiful children, grandchildren. An occupation, the fishing line, professional fisherman. Wasn't any such thing when I was 12 years old. No such thing. And yet God had it on that mountain. All of that stuff, totally unimportant when Jesus was hanging on that cross. What he was hanging there for was you. And he was hanging there not for 50 or 60 or 70, or 80 or 90, 100 years old. He was hanging there for eternity. 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 A thousand years from now. 10,000 years from now doesn't matter. When I walked down that aisle at 12 years old, told that preacher I didn't want to go to hell. If that's the only thing that God guaranteed us, if he just did that and abandoned us and let us go through hell here on earth, and we would without him. We do something even with him. If he did that, it wouldn't matter. Still be worth it. Still be worth it. I don't know if you ever thought about it, but 100 years from now, everybody in this room is going to be alive in either heaven or hell. Everybody that's ever lived and died from the beginning of time to now is alive in either heaven or hell. 50 years from now, most of us will be alive in either heaven or hell. I wouldn't want to live what years I have left here on this earth without Jesus every single minute of every single day. I wouldn't want to do that. But that's minuscule compared to what I've trusted God with. That's a little bitty tiny sliver of time with eternity. Because I know without a shadow of a doubt that when I close my eyes here on this earth, when I open them, I'm looking into the eyes of Jesus. 
and I'll be able to look in those eyes century after century after century. Yes. I wouldn't want to get in that truck and drive back to Murray County, Oklahoma without that relationship with God. It's taking a big chance when you do that. But I'm just telling you, if you're not saved, if you're not a born-again Christian, if you haven't asked God to come into your life and save you, don't leave here today without doing that. Do not leave here today without doing that. I get the opportunity to speak at 15 or 20 churches a year around the country. We've had, and this is, I've been doing this for a lot of years, we've had several instances where I've got letters from churches where you remember so-and-so that you met there, got saved that night, had a heart attack and died yesterday. One of them was one of the pastor's brothers, had not been in church since he was a kid, 50 some odd years old. That man got saved at that event that night at that church. Three weeks later, he had a massive heart attack and died. That man was gonna have that heart attack and die on that day, no matter what. Had it not been for his brother and those men down there putting together that event that caused that guy to come into that church and accept Jesus and say, he's in heaven right now. Where he would have been burning an actress. We've had, that happened several times over the years. 